Here we go with more examples. So let's compute the partial um, uh, derivatives of the following uh, functions. So uh, I'm going to start with the second one since it's the easiest one. So let's compute the partial derivative of the second one. So uh, let's look at f of x equal to 4x squared y plus x cubed y cubed plus y plus 4. So if I look at my x terms, so I have x here, x squared, x cubed, and then nothing and nothing. So the derivative of x squared is 2x, so I get 4 times 2xy plus the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared times y cubed, which is just a coefficient, plus 0. So y alone, when you differentiate y with respect to x, it's 0. And then a constant, when you derive it with respect to any variable, okay, you get 0. And then if you simplify, you have 8xy plus 3x squared y cubed. And now you do it again with respect to y. So I like to, to color my y first. So I have a y for the first term, a y cubed for the second term. I have a y for the third term, and I have a nothing. It's just a constant for the last one. So the derivative of y is 1. So you get 4x squared times 1 plus x cubed. The derivative of y cubed is 3y squared plus the derivative of y is 1. And the derivative of 4 is 0. We're computing derivatives with respect to y right now. So once you clean everything up, you get 4x squared plus 3x cubed y squared plus 1. And that's your partial derivative with respect to y. That's the warm-up example. Now let's get into it more deeply. So for the first example, I have f of x, which is the square root of x squared minus y squared. Remember, with square roots normally, or end root in general, normally you just want to use the corresponding power to use a power rule. So we have the square root of some shit here, so we're going to use a chain rule. So when you're computing f of x, because inside the function I have, I have the variable x, I'm going to use a chain rule inside the square root. So here, I have the square root of some stuff. So I'm using my chain rule. So I have some shit to the power one half. The one half falls up front. I get one half. The inside is unchanged to the power minus one half, which is one half minus one. But then you need to multiply afterwards by the derivative of the inside. And of course, make sure that you use the derivative with respect to the correct variable. So here we're doing it with respect to x. And now within that function, x squared minus y squared, the only thing that depends on x is x squared, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. And now you can simplify everything, so you can take your negative one half. Of course, you could leave it like this if the question is just to compute the derivative, if you need to clean it. So the power minus one half will go down as a power one half, which is a square root. It will go down um, at the denominator, and then one half times 2x, that will simplify to x, and that gives you your partial derivative with respect to x. Now with respect to y, the exact same game here. So within my square root, I have a term that depends on y, which is y squared. So I'm going to use a chain rule. The one half will fall up front. The inside is going to be untouched, untouched by a creepy n. So this is untouched. The new power is the former power minus one. One half minus one is minus one half times the inside derivative. So the inside derivative now with respect to y, so the only thing that depends on y is the minus y squared. The derivative of minus y squared is minus 2y. Minus 2y times 1 half is just minus y. The minus 1 half, I'm going to bring it down at the denominator. And then I have uh, the square root of x squared minus y squared at the denominator. And now I have my partial derivative with respect to y. So two chain rule, because I had like an expression that was to the power of one half, and that expression was depending on x and y. So the only difference between the two derivatives is that it's the inner derivative. It was 2x when I computed f of x, and it was minus 2y when I was computing with respect to y. Next example, we want to compute the partial derivatives of the function f, which is y multiplied with e to the power x, y. So there's a product of two terms, but when you're computing partial derivatives, maybe that product is not necessarily a product 
of two terms that depend on one variable. So for example, when you compute f of x, the partial derivative of f with respect to x, the only place where you see your variable x is at the power of the exponential function. So it's not the product of two things. It's just a variable stuck within the exponent of the exponential function. So the only thing you have to do here is the chain rule. So the y just goes up front as a coefficient, and you need to differentiate e to the power of uh, some shit. And we know that ex goes to ex, so e to the power of something will go to e to the power of that same thing, so untouch. But then you need to multiply afterwards by the derivative of the inside with respect to x. So here the variable x is going to be differentiated and you're going to get one. So once you clean your act here, you're just going to get y times y outside and you're getting your y squared times e to the power xy. So because x was only appearing at the power of the exponential function, I only had to do one mini chain rule. Okay, so uh, the y was just a coefficient like a 5 or a 13. y is a coefficient. But now, and that's the twist here, when you're going to differentiate this function with respect to y now, there's two y's. There's the y up front that multiplies the exponential function where the y is also at the exponent. So here you have no choice. You have to use a product rule. This is the product of two things when I'm doing it with respect to uh, to y. So I have to use a product rule now. So I need to differentiate the first term with respect to y. So my product rule here, so I'm using the u prime idea. So if you want me to label it, so this is my u and this is my v and I'm using my, my product rule. So this is the u prime. So you get u y times v plus u times v prime. But of course you're doing it with respect to y. So you're using del del y's when you're computing derivatives. And now when you label your stuff, so derivative of y is just 1, exy stays exy. Then for the second one, we have e to the power of xy. So now I have to use again a chain rule, but of course this chain rule now is with respect to y. So derivative of e to the something is e to that thing unchanged. So xy is unchanged. So E stuff goes to E stuff times the derivative of the inside. So times, oh, I have a lot of room here, derivative of the inside, but with respect to Y now. So I only have one term with respect to Y, and it's the Y derivative of Y is uh, is 1. So the bracket missing here. So derivative of Y is 1. And now when you simplify this, you get EXY times 1, which is gone plus y times x, so xy if you put it in order, times exy, and that's your partial derivative with respect to y. And this is really a classic question on a test, a formula where one of the variable is inside something, so it's just a chain rule, but then the other one is a product or a quotient. So a very, very classic example to see if you see the distinction between when to only use the chain rule or when to use the uh, product or quotient rule. All right, one more example. Suppose f is x times ln of 2x plus 3y plus xy. Let's compute the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. So when you're doing it with respect to x, so the first one with respect to x, I see my x here is outside the logarithmic term, and inside I have 2x and xy. So here I have the product of two things. I have no choice to use a product rule when you're computing the partial derivative with respect to um, to x. So here my first term is going to be x, so that's going to be my u, and my second term is going to be v, and I'm using the product rule. So my product rule gives me u prime, which is the derivative of x with respect to x times v, which is ln of 2x plus 3x plus y, xy, sorry, and then plus u untouched, which is just x times v prime, so the derivative of ln of 2x plus 3y plus xy. So when you differentiate x here, of course, you're just going to get 1. But now when you're going to differentiate ln of some stuff, okay, so you, have, you are going to use the chain rule. So you have ln of some shit, okay, you're going to get 1 over that shit times the derivative of that shit with respect to x. So here, let's take the time to label the x's. So the derivative of x, of 2x is going to be, sorry, I forgot to label it correctly. So 
2x and x here. So the derivative of 2x is just 2, and the derivative of xy, because the derivative of x is just 1, the derivative of xy is just y. And now you're done. You can just simplify this. The 1 is gone, so you get ln of 2x plus 3y plus xy. And if you multiply, uh, you don't need to simplify, so you can just leave it like this. So you could write 2x plus xy at the numerator over 2x plus 3y plus xy, but whatever. So that's that's good enough. And now for the with respect to y, uh, if I look at my term, at my, at my function, I, and I label where the y are, so I have a 3y here and a y there, but both of them are within the logarithmic function, so I don't need a product rule here. I can go right away and just do my chain rules. So I'm going to just apply the chain rule so the x will just be a coefficient. I'm just going to use the chain rule on uh, on my logarithmic function. So I know that 1 ln of something will go to 1 over that thing. So I'm just using my chain rule again. And then I need to differentiate and multiply by the derivative of the inside. Of course, now I'm doing it with respect to y, so I have a 3y that will go to 3, and I have an xy because y goes to 1, xy will go to x. And now with my chain rule, right away in one shot, I get that my derivative, my partial derivative with respect to y is just x over 2x plus 3y plus xy multiplied by 3 plus x. You could write the numerator as 3x plus x squared. It does not really matter here. Okay, so uh, the goal here, and again, this is a perfect example, a perfect example of a partial derivative question at this level where in one case, with respect to x, it was a product rule first, and with respect to y, it was a chain rule. So I love those questions where you have to use different rules of differentiation when you have like one variable uh, one variable that changes from x to y. Okay, so here in this case, product rule for f of x, but chain rule for f of y. Anyways, that's a lot of examples um, uh, for partial derivatives. So for the second section of function of two variables, that's it. That's all. Bye-bye,